Welcome to Fires, the Mikey's Gaming Oasis. In today's episode, we're going to be going over the most recent update for this lovely game that is still in early access and still growing and listening to their players to improve the game. This update was originally planned for the 27th. We got lucky and they announced a couple days ago that it's going to be released on the 22nd, which it was on time, actually early, which is very rare for games like this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the new stuff for Around the Base. And then as well, we're going to look at the, the items for armor and then what they've done to the map itself. And then go over some other notes that they've brought up as well. Uh, in the link in the description below, you will find the link to the update notes that have just gone live. As well as a link to my Discord and to the Discord for Dawn of Defiance. Make sure that if you are playing this game and you notice any bugs, anything you want to update or change or you think could improve the game, you go on to there and you let them know. I will tell you from personal experience, Monday and the other moderators listen to what input you are giving to improve this game. Also, if you like this content, make sure you subscribe hits the subscribe button if you haven't already hit that like button and don't forget that noti bell so that you can stay up to date in all updates for dawn of defiance so without any further ado let's get going into it so let's get into it the first thing we're going to look at is the two new buildables added to dawn of defiance these are the town center and the town center chest now the town center is going to cost you 200 lumber 400 stone and 50 ingots what this does, it allows, it sets a 100 meter radius in which town chests can be used for building and crafting. In other words, as you remember when the game first came out, we could use any chest and we could do what's called remote crafting. Well, with the town center, now you have the town center chest that allows you to do that instead. There's one other feature in the town center chest that I think you're going to like. We'll get, that into, get to that in just a moment. First, we need to take a look at the town center. So the town center is a solid, large structure. Uh, it's not piecemealed together. It comes in just this size. Uh, it's going to change the way we craft as well as the way we build. As we build our, our town centers and our villages, we will most likely be able to use this as a focal point in the middle. I would love to see what they're going to do and add to this as we go on because we all know they love to add little hidden gems in the game itself and i think this is going to be a fun thing to see what they do with it to make this viable so the second item that they've added is the town chest as you see it's quite a bit more ornate than the typical chest that we are accustomed to now the town chest is going to cost us 15 dark wood 10 rope and 5 leather to craft. Now, I know that seems a little bit more expensive, which means we have to wait later on in the game to get it. But it does have some features that I think is going to help us with our building. One key feature in this is that if we look at the original chest, we have slots for 20 spaces, 20 slots. That's it. But if we go over to the town chest, it has double that. The town chest has 40 slots. So that means less boxes for our organizing and keeping stuff clean. Another thing that they've added is a whole new weapon set, the Reaver set. That comes with the Reaver sword, the Reaver mace, the Reaver spear, Reaver bow, and Reaver shield. Now, this is the first time we've had a mace in the game, which I think is amazing. If you look here, it is a one-handed mace, which is really BA in my opinion, although I think it would be kind of cool to have a two-handed mace in the game as well. Then you have the Reaver sword, as which has all the same thing as the previous ones where you can make the different, the different tiers of it. You have the Reaver Spear, Reaver Bow, and the Reaver Shield. Now, the Reaver Shield does look like the old Hoplite Shield, which has been turned into a circular shield, but that's okay. I still think it is a nice addition to the game, and I can't wait to play around with it for our uh, 
for our defier to see how this works. So for our seasoned defiers, you know that right here next to this portal, there's not typically uh, resource nodes. And if you've noticed, the nodes have changed the way they look. Okay, this is the tin ore look. Now, they've done this throughout the map. They've also added additional resource node to make them more easily accessible to where you don't have to go from one side of the map to the other side of the map back to the other side of the map to get resource items uh another thing that they've done is they've changed the ai up a little bit when it comes to battle and they've made them a, your combatants a little stronger which we will see here in just a second as i get my butt completely kicked by a uh, golem here so what they've done if you notice I have another golem off to the side attacking me as you know prior that didn't happen what they've done is they've changed the AI pathing throughout the game so your combatants your enemies aren't gonna be following that set path anymore they can go a little bit wider a field and they can be a little more interactive with you so you don't know exactly where they're going to be all the time another thing they've added is the skeleton army now these guys as well as this lovely strike down animation has been updated as well so that you get a more vibrant feel of it but the skeleton army can be found in the uh, desert and they'll pop out of the ground and they do hit kind of hard for being skellies So make sure you're ready for that and keep your head on a swivel when you're swimming when you're uh, roaming around that desert Now the skelly army is not the only thing they've changed when it comes to the combatants in the AI they've also added more enemies placed throughout the crossroads now, along with the additional enemies, they've also added a nice treat for us when it comes to loot drops for taking down some of these enemies, which you will see as soon as I take down this spear guy who likes to chuck things at me. What you'll see here is you see a strong box loot. You have the hide stripes, which is standard, right? Then you have the strong box. The strong box gives us something we've never seen before. It gives us spiced hair loin, which is a special uh, food item that is not currently craftable, but is consumable and gives us additional special abilities. So make sure you keep an eye out for those. Now, I'm sure if any of you have been following my channel, you know I've made comments about the boars not being as aggressive as I think they need to be, because in real life, boars are quite aggressive and scary so what they've done is they've added to them they've given them a little more oomph for their buck as you just saw with that buck right there or rather that boar pushing me back and causing damage even though my shield was up i think the team over at donner defiance is doing an amazing job listening to the community and adding in these quality of life improvements and additions to the game so let's do a quick overview of what we've covered and what they've added to the game or fixed. Here we have the featured additions. Uh, we've covered the town center and the town center chest. Uh, the town center chest is open at the simple hammer stage. So while you may not be able to get the resources for it, you will be able to build it at that stage and unlock it. Uh, I have noticed that it says here that the only items to be placed in the town center chest will be pulled for building and crafting. I believe there is an issue with that, and I'm sure it'll be patched later because I noticed I am able to pull it out of the older uh, boxes as well. Uh, new Reaver weapons, which we covered, that are available in the armory. The Skeleton Army uh, that is in the desert, we got to keep an eye out for. They hit hard and they last long. Uh, uh, added path roaming, that's what I was talking about with the AI, with the enemies not taking a set path anymore, being able to be a little more autonomous. Uh, added more enemy camps. As you see in the video, you are I'm running into enemies in more locations and more frequently throughout the game, which is, I think, amazing. And then, of course, uh, added 
uh, new ore resources, which we covered, and the new art for the Darkwood Ambrosia Tree. Now, I have not looked at that yet. I was having a little issues with the portals not sending me up there, but I will get that uh, image to you shortly. Now, there were a plethora, an absolute plethora of improvements that they've put in from art, differentiating the different types of uh, resource mo nodules that I showed you earlier, uh, to a handful of adapted into the dark, uh, downward strike where we got that beautiful look of that strike that you saw when I was fighting the uh, Skelly army. Updated knockback, proper, knockback properties that I demonstrated with the boar. Uh, adjustments made to the melee behavior uh, per each weapon to make it more realistic. Uh, animation tweaks for combat fitness and flinches with the golems and spear use. Uh, added distant lost soldiers and banter and chatter audio. In other words, we can hear them talk, talking and back, and back and forth with each other. Uh, and then, of course, we go back to one of my key points that I keep harping on and praising the team over at Dawn of Defiance for is listening to the community. If we go down about almost to the bottom, we have things like players being able to now descend in glide modes by holding down the crouch button, uh, which was a quality of life uh, requested on features for the upvote. Then we have the players now have the option to hold sprint function instead of it being binded where you'll put it, press it once and it just stays there, which I totally understand. I get it. Uh, players now gather faster when holding the harvesting button when running between resource nodes. In other words, when we're going, we don't have to stop, do the animation to pick up. We can actually pick up stuff at, on the move, which makes it a little easier. I love that addition. I think it is very important for games like this. Um, controllers now behave more like, uh, more, like, more consistently when using the D-pad and the menus. In other words, it's smoother. Uh, canceling the bow shot no longer cancels the camera zoom. Grindstone appearance, minor map changes and such to trees, rocks, reeds, and etc. And there's also one sneakily little addition they put in here when it comes to minor map changes. They changed the look of the statue slightly and made them easier to use, uh, made them look more crackly and old and more beat up. I love it, it looks more lived in. Now here's that issue I was talking about with the portal. I can portal from the crossroads, but I can't portal to the crossroads. I'm sure Monday you'll see this in my video and uh, take a little look at it, see what's wrong. Maybe it's meant to do that, I don't know. It's kind of new to me because I've always used them to hop around in the map. Now, moving on, we're going to go to the bug fixes. As you see, there are quite a few bug fixes they went to. I'm not going to read them all. I'm just going to go through a few of them. Uh, one is the stam regain would break when gliding into water. They fixed that issue. Another big one here for the upvote is they fixed when players glide and run out of stam and get stuck in between the rocks. That's awesome. Uh, they fixed durability issues. Uh, they fixed issues when consumable timers would not be displayed properly. If you look in the video, you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner, you actually have a, uh, now you have a green line that goes around the consumables box, indicating whether it's good or not. Uh, and lastly, a, di a disclaimer for players who like to experiment with the console. Since we do not officially support use of console commands, we have disabled console accessibility by default. Please contact us on Discord if you have any questions. Well, Defiers, thank you for sticking around, and I hope this information was helpful to you. I know personally I cannot wait to see what comes out of the Dawn of, Dawn of Defiance team next. And as soon as we have more news, I will ensure that I make another video for you to keep you all updated on what's coming out of this team who listens to us so well. Now, I'm heading out. I got to go collect some resources and prep for uh, defeating Hades. Take care, Defiers. And if you found this information helpful, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Keep on fighting, Defiers.